Hello, this is Jamie Romero with Batkey Howell, and today we're going to talk about primitive data types in Java. Java has eight built-in primitive data types. These data types all start with a lowercase letter, and uh, let's list them out here. We got byte, short, int, long, uh, float, double, boolean, and char. So those eight data types are built into Java, and you can use these for the type of any variable that you want to declare. The first four that I have here, maybe actually let me move char up because it's actually belongs with the first ones here. So let's say the first five, these are integral data types. They're integers, they're whole numbers. Whereas float and double, those are both floating point data types. They are numbers with a decimal point and decimal places. And Boolean, well, that represents a true or false value. So these eight data types, they all start with a lowercase letter, and they're built into the Java language. Well, in our Java classes, uh, we have a workbook that we distribute with the class. And one of the pages in the workbook, in chapter 3, shows a nice table of the different data types and things like their minimum and maximum value as well as their size. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to, to bring up this table and talk about each of these data types. As you can see, a byte uh, allows you to store a value between negative 128 and positive 127. The reason that num those numbers are so small is because a byte is stored as an 8-bit integer. Whereas if you used a short, that's 16 bits, so it has a broader a uh, set of values that can be stored inside of it. And an int is even larger, 32 bits, long 64. Float and double, as you can see, a float's a 32-bit IEEE, IEEE floating point number, and a double's a 64-bit IEEE floating point number. Boolean, uh, it doesn't really have a size per se, but rather it only has two possible values, either true or false. And then there's char. Char's an interesting one. Char is stored as a 16-bit Unicode number. In other languages that you might be familiar with, you might have the concept of a character of a char, but that might be stored as 8 bits, as an ASCII value. Well, Java was forward-thinking enough to use Unicode so that you can store characters from, from lots of different languages in there. Uh, although many times you might be just storing a single letter, like a letter A. That's great. If you were using Unicode, let me go out to my browser here, go out to unicode.org. There we go. In Unicode, you can go ahead and make use of characters from other languages. What in essence they've done is they've created a mapping between what they call a code point, we just think of this as a hex value, and a particular character. And so they have, let me see if I can find it here, they have code charts. There it is under Unicode standard code charts. And for example, I'll just click on one of these things, Latin 1 supplement. It'll pull up a PDF document, and we'll see many characters in here. It looks like I need to zoom in a little bit. Let's see, let me find one. Here's the letter C, or the, well, the copyright symbol, actually, because I keep zooming. The copyright symbol is 00A9. That's the Unicode hex value, the code point that represents it. And there's, as you can see, many other symbols. Here's the restricted rights symbol, 00AE, and many others. If I hit back you'll see that there are code points or there are uh, uh, code charts for lots and lots and lots of different languages. We're talking Arabic and Chinese as well as, as many, many others. Okay, well, the reason I bring that up is just to reiterate that Java is using 16 bits to store a character, a char, because it wants to allow for lots of different languages, not just, just uh, basic ASCII languages. You know, one thing that Unicode did well is that... Uh, the first uh, set of characters in Unicode, the first set of code points, match up with the ASCII code charts. And so if you already know that the number 65 is the capital letter A in ASCII, well, it's also the capital letter A in Unicode. It's kind of nice. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and pop over to some sort of editor area. And I want to show you, oh, perhaps some, some character literals here. Or some Not just character, but also some of the other data types. We'll start with int because it's the easiest. I might declare an int called age and set its initial value to 45. 
And so anytime we have a variable, we could do this across two separate lines, by the way, we have to declare the variable, so have the name and the data type, and then specify the value of that variable. And so you could do that as two separate lines like I did just, right, just here, or you could do it all at once. The number 45 is a literal, a literal value um, versus the, value, the, the word age, which is a variable. It could take on a different value later on. Like maybe later you set age equal to uh, 46. So it varies. It has different values. So int literals look like just a number. If you're going with a double, uh, let's say weight equals 155.5 semicolon, well, a weight variable, since we're saying it's a type double, it can have a decimal associated with it. So 155.5 is a literal double value. A uh, float is interesting enough. Let's bring it up. Let's say we have a float called height, and we said somebody was 65.25 inches tall, perhaps. Well, height, uh, excuse me, float literals are a little bit more special here. When Java sees a number with a decimal, it thinks that's a double literal, and it's not going to like that you're trying to store a double into a float. And so you actually have to use a letter F here at the end to say, no, 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 that's a, a float literal, uh, and, and allow the compiler to to make use of that. You know, that's interesting enough. Let me show you what the compiler, er compli <laughs> excuse me, the compiler error message looks like. So let me go over to a program. This is echo.java. We were using this in the last video. And uh, I'll simply just declare a variable called height. And I'll start without the letter F so you can see the error. Let me compile Java C echo.java. And we should see shortly here, yep, there it is, possible loss of precision. So it's saying that we have a double, that's what it found, 65.25, and you're trying to store it in a variable of type float. So again, if you're ever trying to store a literal value into a float, just drop a letter F at the end. It actually can be lowercase or uppercase. So that now should let that compile. You know, the other literal value that I think is, actually two other things, one is Boolean. Uh, Booleans, the literals are easy. It's either the value true or the value false. Those are the two legal, legal Boolean values. True and false, all lowercase. Whoops, I didn't type that in. Boolean flag equals false or flag equals true, like so. Okay, uh, char though. That's an interesting one. Char mi for middle initial equals, we'll do something like that. The easiest way to declare a character is to use single quotes around that character. But if you wanted to make use of a Unicode code point, you could do something like char copyright equals, and then inside the single quotes, drop in a backslash u, and then the Unicode code point. Uh, if I remember right, that was 004, uh, 00A9, I believe. And so now the variable copyright would have stored inside of it whatever is mapped to that 00A9 code point, which is actually the, the copyright symbol we saw earlier. So that's just a little bit about, uh, about literal values that can be stored into our various primitive data types. Uh, one other thing I want to mention before we wrap up, uh, our workbook mentions that uh, we don't have any unsigned uh, data types. Uh, well, our, our workbook does mention that. I guess I'm just showing you the, uh, the right-hand page. But notice everything is signed in Java. Other languages have the concept of unsigned data types, meaning uh, they only allow for positive values. As you can see, we have both negative and positive values for all of our numeric types here. They're signed integers or signed floating point uh, uh, values. Okay. Well, that actually concludes our video talking about Java's primitive data types. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.